What's the word, y'all? The Portland Trail Blazers are back in no man's land. This feels like a video we make every single year. This is this is not new to them and their organization, but boy, we, we got to chat. They started off the season 10-4, and four, one of the best uh, records in the Western Conference. They had one of the best defenses. And since then, if my math's correct, they are 11-21 and 21 since that 10-4 and four start. And last night, last night they blew a, a 20, what, four-point lead to the Lakers? Shout out to the Lakers, man. At this point, we kind of grown accustomed to seeing LeBron James put up 30 plus points since he turned 38, which is crazy. But of course, Thomas Bryant was the real show with his his stat line and his field goal percentage. They said on the broadcast, the, the only other player in Laker history to do that similar stat line with that field goal percentage was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. And Thomas Bryant is doing that. <laughs> he's been doing it. He's been he's been amazing. And that was a big win for the Lakers being down that much. Because I didn't watch this game live. I was screaming. Twist.tv slash KLT for Q. I fired up because the Lakers game was boring. And they went to halftime down by 24 points. And I'm like, okay, this is over. Let's go on here and play some FIFA. And I'm playing FIFA. I'm being bad at it. And then the chat is like, the Lakers are coming back. I thought they was capping. So I look at the, st the stats. They're like, it's like a two-point game. I'm like, oh, no. So the, the Portland Trailblazers were up by 24 points at one point and lost by nearly double digits. They lost by nine points. So what I did is I woke up this morning. I'm like, how the hell did they blow this game? So I watched it. But no man's land, man. No man's land is is is, is where they're, they're residing. You know, it, it's a bit weird. And before we even talk about the things that's going on, can I quickly defend myself? Because I, th this is something that happens way too often. I'm just going to use the Portland Trailblazers as an example. When they started off the season 10 and 4, right? We, if you watch our podcast, you know I was a bit skeptical about the start. If you if you remember, Jeremy Grant hit a game winner. Anthony Simons hit a game winner. Josh Hart hit a game winner. That, that They hit three game winners in the span of like a week and a half. And you, you win those games. Those are counted as dubs. But I went onto the podcast and said, I need to see more. I need to see a longer stretch. And boy, my mentions was, oh, can he never get Trailblazers? No love. Boom, boom, boom. I'm going to say this again for the millionth time on this channel. I try to make these videos and make my NBA opinions and stuff as, as objective as possible. Of course, I don't shoot 100%. Nobody does. But what I saw with the Portland Trailblazers during that stretch didn't seem sustainable. I didn't think the defense that was anchored by Yusuf Nurkic was going to continue to be top 10. I didn't think that they were going to continue to hit game winners throughout the course of the season. I didn't think they were going to be this bad, though. But in the moment, I was giving y'all these, these real reasons why I didn't think that start was realistic. I felt like I was public enemy number one on Trailblazer Twitter because of that. And it, it, like You know what I'm saying? So I'm just, I'm not... This is not like a victory lap. Oh, they're bad. See, I'm right. But I'm just saying, like, I don't have uh, a hatred for any organization. Like, ever. This is my job, ladies and gentlemen, to try to be objective as possible when I'm talking about basketball. So even if I don't talk about your team enough, I get that a lot, too. Oh, you don't talk about our team? That don't mean I don't like y'all. It just ain't really been a, a, a way for me to bring it into conversation. You know what I'm saying? So back to the Trailblazers, because, again, it, it hasn't been good since that, that great start. And listen, it's a Kenny Freo video, so you know we got to talk about moves and changes, because that's what we're obsessed with on this channel. The Portland Trailblazers have one timeline, and that timeline is Damian Lillard. They have the greatest player in their franchise history actively on their roster and still playing great basketball. And again, I'm not a guy that's going to ever come on here again and talk about Trey Dame until this man tells the world himself that he wants to be traded. So their timeline is put the best team around Dame so we can get him in a position to win a championship. They made one conference finals run with CJ McCollum. They shipped CJ McCollum out the dough maybe a year or two too late, but they finally did it to build this roster. And this roster in itself is a pretty pretty new roster for Dame. Josh Hart hasn't been there for more than a season and a half. Jeremy Grant was this season acquisition. Uh, Drew Eubanks new. Shaden Sharp, Gary Payton. These are all people that haven't been there very long. And still, felt like there was a hard ceiling on this. I actually really like their starting lineup on paper between Dame, Simons, Josh Hart, Jeremy Grant, and Yusuf Nurkic. I, I thought it was cool, but now we start looking at that depth. And Drew Eubanks was the better center last night against the Lakers, but he's an undersized center at 6'9". Shaden Sharp, is was was he the youngest player drafted in this year's draft? Of course, he's going to go through hot streaks, cold streaks, or whatever. Gary Payton II is finally getting a real PT after missing a great majority of the season. And Nazir Little is finally back, and he was one of the best players last night. He only played 13 minutes. So what did they possibly do? To get them out of this no man's land to help Damian Lillard. Because again, I mean, the easy thing to do is say, hey, trade Dame, do this, do that. And now we we just thinking about it differently. I'll be honest with you. The Trailblazers are our team. I'm low-key been rooted for this season. Because the Bulls pick is old to the Orlando Magic. And the Trailblazers pick is old to the Bulls if they make the playoffs. But right now, they ain't making the playoffs. They, they ain't doing it. And, and things get ultra weird when you start talking about the salary cap, the luxury tax, and all of that. 
because it feels pretty pretty obvious that they're going to attempt everything in their power to bring Jeremy Grant back. He's been an amazing pickup for him, uh, for them. I mean, he went through a stretch where he was averaging like 25 points per game when they were still doing solid basketball stuff. But like Josh Hart is up for an, uh, um, a new contract because he's got like a player option and he's making pennies on a dollar for what he could potentially make on the market. And if you decide that you want to get Jeremy Grant his money because he's going to be worth, worth a lot of money and you try to get Josh Hart his money, now you're into the luxury tax on a team that's sub 500. So that feels like something that the ownership wouldn't want to do. So what do you do instead? You find a new home for Josh Hart so you can make something out of what he's making before you just leave him in free agency. I think one of the mistakes um, that they made in the last couple off seasons was extending use of Nurkic. I know that they basically had no, no alternative when it came to that center position. So yeah, here's a new contract use, but like he he hasn't he hasn't been good. Um, he, he's a really cool dude from every account I've heard, but like. He just hasn't been good. And, and the best versions of what the Portland Trailblazers have been is when they were spamming pick and roll with Dame and Nurkic. And if you look at their pick and roll percentage, it's down like 14% this season compared to the other seasons. And part of that is because, well, now we got Anthony Simons. We brought Anthony Simons in on a four-year, $100 million contract. We can't just have him spotting up all the time. He also has to do some of the stuff with the ball in his hand. So now Damian Lillard pick and roll positions, possessions are going down. And that means Yusuf Nurkic's value as a player is going down as well. Again, they had big body Thomas Bryant having the game of his career and they couldn't play Yusuf Nurkic they couldn't play him they decided to go with the 6-9 Drew Eubanks on him because that was their best option and we'll address the biggest elephant in the room is that the Dame Anthony Simons together time hasn't looked good it just hasn't looked good, and I don't have the numbers to prove that or whatever, but it feels like Anthony Simons is more effective when he's not playing with Dame, and Dame is more effective when he's not playing with Anthony Simons. And you have to figure it out because you gave Anthony Simons his money, um, and I'm not saying they won't be able to figure it out. I mean, they, this is their first season of playing together, and Anthony Simons is not 24 years old. He's a 23-year-old young NBA player. So I, I didn't expect these two to come in and look like Dame and CJ did because it took years upon years upon years for Dame and CJ to look like that backcourt together, and they just ain't had it so far. Chauncey Billups, after last night's loss, said that they're going to look into every option to potentially change the team, and he meant like rotations and starters and stuff like that. But as I look at this roster, I don't see what that can be to maximize to get them in a place that they really want to be. Like Joe Cronin said before the season, not not publicly or, or like he came to the mic and said, we're not a championship team. But he said that they were just going to try to progressively get better. And that sounds like somebody that's not looking at their roster as a contender. We can see this roster. We know that they're not a contender. But them being the 13th seed is something that they didn't prepare for either. Is it in the best interest to maybe lose so you could get another lottery pick? Pro probably. Probably. But if you look at the roster that they have, if we're talking about swinging for the fences and getting another star to put alongside Dame, again, we don't know who that star is on the market. I, there's not a lot of stars on the market at all in this year's uh, trade deadline, at least yet. But like again, we talk about Josh Hart's contract extensions and how they probably won't be able to afford that. If you really want to get ballsy and you want to put Dame in the best position to do Dame stuff, are you coming in or? Okay, well, I guess Koba's uh, filming this video too. If you want to put Dame in the best best position and you want to get him a secondary star, the Josh Hart, Shane Sharp, the, the these these are people that would be valuable. I mean, even Anthony Simons, like my boy Derek, is a bulls blazers spurs fan and for the last month or so he's been he's been trying to tell the people he wants to see an anthony simons og on no trade that is that is the way you write the ship and i didn't think after what anthony simons showed last season shooting 40 percent from three and when dame went now basically being the engine of that offense even though they weren't good that just as fast that not that they're tr they're ch like changing up on him but they'd be willing to throw him in an additional trade but again Darius mindset is hey dame is our timeline and og ananobi probably fits what dame needs to do or what the team needs more than what anthony simons does but i kind of look at that like anthony simons sharp the these are some some young players that if i'm want to hit if i would hit the reset button and i have a star player of a demar Derozan or pascal i don't know i'm just saying these are these are the players that are closest to maybe but i don't i doubt it those are people i'd be interested in that, that, that boy sharp looks good he looks sharp out there you know what i'm saying i mean at times and he's also super young Anthony Simon showed that he can shoot 40% on a high clip, moving threes, and not just catch and shoot really, really well. But ultimately, another thing that really uh, boggles this team down is how small they are. Um, 
the only person above seven foot or seven foot or close to it is Yusuf Nurkic. Again, Drew Eubanks is 6'9", and nobody else on the team is 6'10". They're a small team. And I don't feel like, other than, again, last night, that they've been getting dogged by these bigger, bigger players. But it, but it, it does matter. It does matter having that lack of size. You can't even tell there's a dog in there, can you? You can't, you can't even you can't even see him. Now, here are the next couple games for the Trailblaze. It's against the Spurs tonight. Good redemption game against a team that isn't actively trying to win basketball games. The Utah Jazz, the Toronto Raptors, the Atlanta Hawks, the Grizzlies, the Wizards. Like, their schedule is not super easy. It's also not super tough. So, I mean, they have Damian Lillard, who is still putting up crazy numbers, 50 points in a loss, 47 points in a, like, stuff like that. They could win more games, but again, even if they do end up making a run and, and getting into the playoffs, we know what the ceiling is on this team, and it's not extremely high.